Welcome back for video number two, guys. Uh, as we saw at the end there of video number one, I was unable to access the internet after uh, intentionally disabling my network adapter. Now, a lot of you guys uh, may be looking at your task manager. Uh, I don't know. I guess in this particular scenario, you'd have a working PC or you're just watching this, but you've seen this before. And you actually see this red X and this is not a drill. Uh, for you guys, this is very real, and uh, my sympathies go out to you. Now, there are a number of causes, uh, potentially, in this particular case. Hey, my network adapter is disabled, so I'm not actually connected to anything. Great, Red X. Um, it's a very easy fix. Some people, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, some people, they're, you know, maybe it's a different fix, but it's really just as simple. So what we're going to do is go over some of the common connection issue fixes in this video. Um, we're going to go over the uh, the PC in this particular case. I'm not going to be covering mobile devices, uh, Mac. Uh, for you guys on Mac, it's, it's actually relatively simple as well. I mean, you could find anything on a Mac with the spotlight feature. It's pretty simple. But... Um, Hopefully you guys know what you're doing. And uh, same thing with, you know, different operating systems. Once again, uh, I'm not going to be covering uh, too much outside of Windows 7 as I don't uh, have those environments available to do that. That being said, uh, you may occasionally see me use a run dialog shortcut and they will apply to other versions of Windows at the very least. So in this particular case, once again, I wanted to look up some funny CAD videos and I was unable to do that. Now let's just, you know, say for the sake of argument here that I'm sitting down at my PC, I'm not making this video. The first thing I'm going to do is check to see whether or not my network adapter is enabled. Now, a lot of people are not going to do that. They're going to call Comcast and I'm going to urge you not to do that because they're going to reset your modem and oftentimes, uh, it's my own personal belief, that if a modem is working, if you've not had any issues with your modem, if your speeds have been fine, don't touch it. So we're going to look at the problem device in this particular case, which is the indicator we're getting from our PC uh, that no connections are available. Now, if you see this and you're on wireless, it's pretty much the same thing, it's just the type of adapter that we use is a little bit different. Uh, in my particular case, I'm using a local area connection or an Ethernet cord, uh, also known as the CAT5. Um, let me get the technical definition on that for you guys here uh, in just a second. But um, anyway, what I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, there's a couple different ways that we can go about this. Um, quickest way for some people, uh, I guess, would be to just simply right click on your network icon. Uh, you can right click or you can just simply click on it. Left click once or right click. Now if you left click, you're going to want to click on this blue link that says Open Network and Sharing Center. Um, it's going to be the same thing. It's already open here. I'll show you guys that once more. Now if you right click, Open Network and Sharing Center appears. You can left click on that. It's really the same thing. Um, what we're looking for is the change adapter settings and under here we'll have our adapters listed. Now the truthful, uh, to be truthful, the quickest way to reach this uh, would simply be to press the Windows key on our keyboard and then press the letter R. It's going to open up a run dialog box. As you can see I've already got it typed in here. Um, what we're going to do is just type in ncpa.cpl. That's our network control panel. I'll go ahead and close that so you guys can see how that works. Whoops, what did I just click? Didn't mean to do that. All right. All right, so we've got our network connections panel here. And this is going to show us our currently installed, this is key, currently installed uh, network adapters. Now, if your network adapter is not installed or the drivers are not installed, you may not see it here. Um, that's okay. We can actually cover that in just a moment as well. In this particular case, this is very simple though. I'm connecting via a Ethernet cable and we have our disabled Ethernet adapter. So it's very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to right click on that and we're going to select the enable option. Notice we'll get a prompt from our PC here that it's currently enabling our network. And you'll notice the red X has also disappeared. Now, on some older machines or some uh, machines that have questionable hardware installed, 
and by that I just mean older hardware maybe if your machine's a little bit slow uh, that whole process might take a little bit longer but generally speaking it's pretty fast uh, so let's go back to google.com now now that we've got our uh, network connection enabled you might notice that it'll take a few seconds um, you notice resolving host appeared down there that's okay now we're just gonna go to funny cat videos look at that so we got our funny cat videos right uh, let's go ahead and go back home so we're connected again uh, now if you are on a wireless connection uh, which you'll see here uh, let's just go ahead and open this up you won't see local area connection properties you might see something like wireless network properties wireless connection properties that's okay um, but the the process is the same just for enabling and disabling the adapter uh, it doesn't matter how you're connecting now you also want to make sure too uh, if you see that red X you want to make sure that your hardware switch is enabled and this is this is just for you mobile users it doesn't matter what operating system you have if you have a switch on the side the front or above your keyboard even if it's not a switch even if it's a button like a function F10 or function F12 or uh, maybe like a little button if it has a uh, uh, little radio wave icon or something that looks like a baseball diamond or a staircase uh, it's indicating that it is your Wi-Fi switch heck if it says uh, 8 to 11 you know B and G uh, B is really old but if it says you know 8 to 11 N or anything like that uh, that's your your Wi-Fi switch make sure that's enabled uh, generally speaking most equipment will have some sort of an indicator light letting you know that it is enabled uh, it might have a a two color light system uh, red or orange may indicate uh, disabled or not in use one or the other um, so make sure that's also enabled um, and that pretty much covers the adapter itself as far as uh, enabled or disabled but we're actually going to go a little bit further into detail still surrounding the adapter uh, because we have our drivers which enable the adapter to actually function um, doesn't matter if your adapter is enabled if you don't have the network adapter drivers you're not connecting to the internet so let's go ahead and uh, again there are several different ways that we can go about doing this um, I'm gonna leave this to the side here for just a moment um, because we actually need to come back to this as well this is sort of like a side fix we'll call it um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to um, show you guys two two I will say 2.5 ways to get there um, my favorite way that everybody seems to overlook what we're looking for by the way guys is our hardware manager um, or our device manager rather and my favorite way to actually do this because everybody overlooks is just to simply right click on the computer icon or my computer and then select manage it's very simple uh, this can be confusing to some though because this actually brings up your entire computer management window instead of just your device manager but device manager is readily available there now you'll notice I have all of my installed hardware here uh, that's what you're looking for uh, once again there's several different ways to get here though you can do it from your start menu simply right click on computer and then select manage that's another way to do it that'll bring you to the same window and of course there is also device management so if you go ahead and uh, hold down your Windows key press the letter R that brings up your run dialog box and then you type in DEV MGMT CPL whoops I'm sorry not CPL DEV MGMT MSC what am I saying it's not the network control panel that's gonna bring up your device manager now typically if you don't have something installed what we're looking for is some sort of an indicator maybe a yellow exclamation mark red exclamation mark something like that uh, in this particular case I do have one piece of hardware that I have disabled and that would be the uh, integrated graphics uh, on the machine um, and you can kind of see there uh, what that would look like um, you'll get generally if you do have something let's just say this if you have something that is uh, disabled it'll open that category for you um, a lot of you know people especially with laptops will have a you know a number of different things uh, that they're constantly plugging in and unplugging uh, portable hard drives uh, mice headsets um, you know depending if you use it for work you might be plugging it into you know some sort of a projection you know type thing at work um, you know a lot of a lot of times this type of stuff uh, you know you may see something show up here um, what we're gonna be focusing on though is our network adapters 
Uh, once again, in my particular case, I only have the Ethernet that's currently installed. Um, it's okay if you see more than one in here, just like it's okay, you know, if you do down in your network control panel. Um, once again, you'll notice that this is the same exact adapter. Uh, whoops, I gotta close that actually. This was already open. You'll notice, just look at the name there Broadcom Netlink, Gigabit Ethernet. It's the same exact adapter, uh, except we have some different functionality here. Uh, in this particular case, what we're going to do, um, and what I'd like to recommend doing, is um, right clicking on this. Now you can enable and disable, just like you can here. Uh, but what we're going to do here is choose the uninstall option if we're having an issue. Now, again, this is something that you would only do if, uh, again, I'm going to pretend that the PC I'm on right now is having an issue and um, only this PC is having an issue. So my tablet's fine, uh, my phones are fine, everything else is fine. Uh, they're connecting to my Wi-Fi router over here just fine. Uh, but my PC is not connecting. So this would be the next logical step. Check your drivers. Again, this is something that Comcast will walk you through, um, but I don't think you want to waste the time doing that with Comcast when you can easily do this on your own. Um, so what we're going to go ahead is right click on that and choose the uninstall option. Now, you're going to get a prompt. Um, again, this is very important. Uh, it's going to look a little bit different from machine to machine. In a lot of cases, you're not going to see this um, what you'll see is the Windows type environment uh, screen that'll pop up. Either way, you're always going to get a checkbox that'll give you the option to delete the driver software for this device. You never want to select that. And I'm actually going to go ahead and go through with this for you guys. Um, so we're going to uninstall that. Now, this is very important. Uh, once again, I did not check the box to delete the driver software. You don't want to do that. It's not something that you can't recover from, but it's certainly not going to help your connection issues. Uh, it's going to take you on a huge detour. It's going to take you a little bit longer to fix. You're probably going to end up needing a USB drive or another method to connect to the internet, basically, until you can obtain those drivers. So, um, once again, that window may look different for you. It's generally going to be about this size that I'm moving around here, the device manager window, and the box will appear down in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, you want to make sure that uh, you do not check that box. If it, it, By default, it will be empty. If for some reason there's something in there, remove it. Uh, now, moving forward, you'll notice that there is no longer a uh, network section here, and that's normal because there's nothing installed for that. Uh, what we're going to do instead, uh, if you don't see this option up here, uh, scan for hardware changes. It's one of the uh, little shortcut buttons at the top. Um, if you don't see that, click anywhere in here. Uh, oftentimes this button will go away. If, if not, then that's okay. You can also go under action, uh, under the action menu, scan for hardware changes. The very first thing it should find is your ethernet controller or your, your network interface controller, your network card, uh, your NIC, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it should install that automatically. Um, if it doesn't, it'll at least find it for you, allowing you to install it. You guys can see just how easy that actually was. Um, let's go ahead and um, go to google.com once more. And then this time we're going to look up funny dog videos. And we've got funny dog videos. Um, we'll go to cute baby videos. Um, cute baby laughing. So, you know, you get the idea. We're back connected to the internet. Um, so that's, you know, how you can basically just go ahead and enable and disable your, your internet uh, adapter or your network adapter, rather. Sorry about that. And uh, install or uninstall and reinstall your drivers. I know it sounds silly, but doing that can fix a lot of your connection problems. Now, what we're going to do is actually come back over to our network uh, control panel here. Uh, I wanted to leave this open, but I, I couldn't for the sake of example there. Um, this is sort of a side thing. Uh, this is going to relate more to Comcast customers than anything else in these videos, uh, except for the part on how to deal with Comcast coming up later. But uh, if you are with Comcast, because they are rolling out a lot of IPv6 regions, um, honestly, I'm not going to go into detail about what the difference is between IPv4 and IPv6. 
Uh, think of it like, uh, you know, more address availability. That's the biggest benefit. There's, there's now more IP addresses in the pool. Uh, we were quite literally running out of IP addresses. Uh, that was the problem. So uh, you're not actually going to really lose anything by disabling IPv6. Um, I leave it on, but I don't actually have IPv6 connectivity here. Uh, that being said, uh, what we're going to focus on here is the, uh, the issue that you may be having with Comcast, especially for those of you that have Windows 8, and especially for those of you that have Windows 8.1 with notebook computers. Uh, if you are under that category and you're watching these videos, then you probably at some point have failed to reach a website. Um, what we're going to do here, uh, let me see if I can pull up a uh, Google IP address. Um, all right. I don't know, it's Australia's. I'm looking for Google's IP address right now while I'm uh, kind of multitasking. So what we're gonna do is uh, go over how you can sort of fix some of the DNS issues that you're having. Um, if you have, once again, Comcast with Windows 8. Now, you don't need to have Windows 8 or a notebook computer or even Comcast for this to help you. Um, but if you're having DNS issues, um, and, and one of the ways uh, that you can kind of you know, determine whether or not you're having a DNS issue as well. Um, pages will not load for you. Let's say you type in google.com. Um, you know, if you type in google.com and the page fails to load, um, you know, that's one sure indicator, possible indicator anyway, that you could be having a DNS issue. Um, I'm trying to, to find a, I don't feel like going through my command prompt and for some reason all of the IPs I'm using are not working now if you are having a DNS issue one of the ways to confirm once again is to type in something like google.com and if you're unable to reach the website type in the actual IP address uh, what the DNS server does, the name server, what that does is it takes the IP and turns it into the name that you know, or turns the name that you know into the IP address for that server. So um, let's go ahead and ah, here we are. I think this will do. Sorry, I'm distracted here, guys. Um, what we're going to do for this example here. So I'm going to show you exactly, uh, I can't simulate the DNS issue, uh, but I can sure show you exactly what it would look like. So if you are, you know, connected to the internet, all of your devices are working, uh, including the device that you're on, a lot of programs may still work. Something like Yahoo Messenger might still work. And let's say you open up Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, and you still can't connect to the, your bank's website or something like that. But your Internet radio still works or Yahoo Messenger still works. Now, they do have different methods of connecting. Some applications, desktop applications, will still work during a DNS issue. Uh, with that being said, what we want to do is confirm that we're having a DNS problem. Um, so you type in google.com and you're unable to reach it. If you go ahead, now Google has a lot of IP addresses. Their, their IP range is huge. Um, but if you type in something like this, 173.194.112.104, that'll take you directly to google.com. If that does work, now what we're going to do to fix this, if that does work for you, then that has shown us that uh, this fix will work for you. So what we're going to go ahead and do is, uh, in your particular case, especially with you 8.1 notebook users, go ahead and uh, disable your IPv6. Uh, just take the check out of that. And then double click on the IPv4. That's right here. We don't want to remove the check in that. We just want to double click on that. We want to make sure that we always have the obtain an IP address automatically checked. Or, I'm sorry, we want the radio dial to be in there. Uh, come on down to the obtain a DNS server address automatically and we want to change that to use the following DNS server address. It's very important. So in my case I'm just going to leave that there but again um, 
use the following DNS server uh, addresses now for Comcast if it's obtaining the DNS server automatically or the server address automatically Comcast for IPv4 is 75.75.75.75 and the secondary is 75.75.76.76 so it's very easy to remember uh, what we're going to use is the Google DNS which is a free DNS available to the public just as reliable if not more in my opinion um, you're not really going to see any kind of a performance decrease or anything like that. Um, you know, many people will argue back and forth for the benefits of Google or simply using your ISP's DNS. If you're with Comcast and um, you're as frustrated as, as I was at some point, you probably just will benefit at least, uh, you know, by peace of mind from just simply switching to Google DNS. Uh, so what we're going to do is switch our preferred DNS server here to 8 and it's automatically going to fill this in so just hit your tab key I'm sorry not your tab key it's your uh, your right arrow key and it's going to look like 8.8.8.8 .8 and then the secondary or the alternate we're going to do 8 and then right arrow again 8 4 and 4 now the dots are already filled in there for you so you don't want to put any dots in there um, let me just show you here. You can't if you wanted to, just anyway, but you don't need zeros or anything. So we're going to have 8.8.8.8 .8 and 8.8.4.4. .4. And you go ahead and select OK. Uh, once again, um, if you're having the issue though, you may want to deselect the uh, IPv6. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that on there though. Uh, and then that would allow us to use Google.com instead of the IP address. Now I don't have an issue right now with my DNS so it's not really gonna help us out too much. But um, and that's pretty much the the adapter um, coverage as far as your PC is gonna be concerned. Enabling, disabling, uh, getting the drivers um, you know uninstalled and reinstalled just to make sure everything's working properly and then your, your DNS. Now your modem and a router, uh, common fixes for your modem and router as well. Uh, these are going to be pertaining to your wireless functionality and we're going to discuss those in the next video. So if you're having any uh, potential uh, wireless routing issues then uh, stay tuned for video number three.